Good morning, everybody. So we are starting nine o'clock Spanish time. That means uh, <laughs> 10 or 15 minutes, but we are on time, according to Spanish standards. So as uh, chairman of the first uh, uh, session of the day, I would like to introduce uh, uh, my colleagues here on the table and then the speakers. We have uh, Fernando Caballero Martinez, uh, which is the dean of the medical school at Francisco de Vitoria University here the hosting institution. Uh, to, the, to the left, uh, we have Sir Jonathan Asbridge, President and Chairman of the European Society of Person-Centered Healthcare. And, and then to my left, we have Professor Andrew Miles, Senior Vice President and Secretary General of the European Society for Person-Centered Healthcare. As, uh, and then uh, I will introduce uh, our speakers today which uh, after this uh, uh, introduction, we will be inviting them to the, to the table. First, we have a welcome words from Fernando Caballero as, as Dean of the Medical School. So, Fernando. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming today. Good morning, Professor Sir Jonathan Asbridge. President and Professor Andrew Miles, Senior Vice President of the European Society of Four Person Centered Healthcare, Dr. Perez Miranda, Vice Rector of the Francisco de Victoria University, and all attendants. Welcome to Madrid, welcome to the Francisco de Victoria University, and welcome to our School of Medicine. First of all, I want to apologize for our rector, Dr. Daniel Sada, not being able to attend this meeting due a business trip. He sends his best wishes for, from Mexico. It's a pleasure for us to host the foundational conference for, uh, of the society, which we wish a long life. I hope you can enjoy these days in Madrid and this conference is as fruitful as possible. We are right now the youngest school of medicine in Spain. We are now in the fourth year of uh, our curriculum of six years. And before we started, uh, was we spent uh, a large amount of time thinking what our mission should be and focusing on the deficits of the healthcare system and the medicine in general. In particular, the necessity to rehumanize the clinical practice and to encourage the de development of a true person-centered medicine. This goal was inspiring for the whole university, and now Francisco de Vitoria University has the mission and the vision in its strategic plan to become, in five years, a reference point for sciences and professions that should be centered on the person, like law, journalism, teaching, nursing, and some others. All these schools have started a process of rethinking their goals and their means. I finally uh, want to say that uh, I'm sure the conclusion of the conference will be useful for us all, will broaden our view, and will allow us to start new and fruitful contacts. We also commit the, to actively part participate in the diffusion of these conclusions nationwide, as well as in South America, where we have a large network of academic and professional contacts. Thank you again for being here today, and I hope that two rainy days of intensive work with more than 30 lectures in July don't make you think that Spain has stopped being an ideal destination for summer holidays. <laughs> Welcome again, and thank you very much. Thank you, Fernando, for the introduction. And then we move on to Professor Sir Jonathan Asbridge, President and Chairman of the European Society for Person-Centered Healthcare. Uh, 
Um, good morning, everybody, and welcome. Um, in a way, I wish I could stand up because I'm so excited uh, about the fact we've actually got here today and also that we're meeting for the first time. Um, I think a lot of us have um, been in communication um, and the first, if you like, two years of this endeavour have been about networking, about making relationships, uh, about building the idea and the concept very much in the way Dean, that you described the development of the of the medical school and the curriculum here, and um, for me, I, it was it was it was very frustrating that we hadn't managed to get together. Um, and uh, the other thing that really quite uh, is exciting for me is the fact that <coughs> we're a fairly small gathering, and I think that uh, is something which is beneficial because over the next two days, uh, it's not just the presentations that are going to help us to. Uh, move forward with person-centered care but it's also those conversations that we're all going to be having outside of the uh, discussions. I, I belonged many years uh, for many years for, to an organization called the Global Nursing Exchange and we used to meet once a year in February um, on the Baja in Mexico uh, where we used to spend four days together and we used to spend it uh, walking, fishing um, and having those conversations. Uh, three of you on a small ponga fishing for red snapper, um, we had the most detailed erudite discussions about conceptual frameworks in nursing practice and about how we can build uh, services for patients. Um, and um, every time we left and, and, and the, the group grew from the original 12 to uh, 50 and, and then our biggest, our biggest conference, we kept it to 75, um, where we were able to co-create and collaborate on an international basis for the development of in, in our field, it was nursing practice. So for me, it's been a great honor to be um, asked to lead the first uh, few years of the society. And um, we will be, over the next uh, 12 months, um, developing uh, develop the governance arrangements. We will be having the first meeting of the, um, of the council, um, of the society, and then we will uh, be holding the elections for the presidents and vice presidents going forward. Uh, and then I'll be able to step down and uh, enjoy being part of the, uh, of the society itself uh, in which we'll be able to bring, and I feel I would like to bring my own contribution like everybody uh, in this room to actually building the body of knowledge that we need to promote person-centered care. Um, the important things that we've been able to establish, Andrew will talk about, um, but at the end of the day, what my responsibility is, is to, is to deliver the sustainability of this uh, society, and in particular, as I've said earlier, the governance of the society, so that we uh, are going to be able to move forward uh, the, uh, the, the development of the organization. And I just want to give you one example of um, why we so desperately need to work as a multidisciplinary team together to develop and promote person-centered practice. Um, on the way over on the plane, um, uh, and I, I, I had a newspaper. Now, um, you know, in all countries, we all have newspapers which fit the needs of members of civil society. Um, and um, I, in the UK, I, I, I read a, 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 a certain newspaper. It's a broadsheet, most of us would read it. But occasionally, we read the tabloids as well. And the tabloids always have really pithy truths in them. And there is an article uh, in yesterday's, one of the yesterday's tabloid newspapers, um, which had this headline, which is just a part of a section. And if those of you can see it, it's, it's misery of patience. And uh, the, the, the report uh, was from a, an Age UK uh, conference, which is a, a, a society for the concern for older people. And the speaker was uh, a, a primary care uh, public health doctor. Uh, and he said, um, he was talking about the fact that um, medicine uh, has moved into, lots of medicine is starting to lose its way. It's becoming far more reductionist. We practice medicine by body part. And he goes on to say that that in itself means that we don't work for the person. And, and the simple example we have here is uh, examples of, of, 
older people who are over-medicated or are medicated for things which mitigate, uh, work against each other and that causes the patients to become worse. And what he calls for is the need for a personalization of medicine in which doctors would discuss a patient's priorities with them. And from my perspective, um, the society comes into its own when it can act as the vehicle for dissemination um, of good practice and the support to each other for developing, which I think we need, which are the conceptual frameworks that come from the theory. So we're generating the theory. We talked a lot. Many people in this room have written tremendous papers about the power of person-centered care and how it can affect um, uh, the patient and health services, and, and in particular, the thing we're most interested in, which is improved clinical outcomes in terms of patient experience, in terms of clinical outcomes for patients, patient safety, and also for those of us who are involved in the, uh, the development of the organization of healthcare, uh, it saves money too. The evidence is absolutely clear. But we need support. We need to support each other to be able to move things forward. That's the aim of this society, to be able to do that through publication, through conferences, um, and also through um, networking with each other. So many thanks for your great welcome. It's tremendous to be in this building and in this university and within this medical school. And uh, we uh, commit to supporting you in the aspirations of this university. And I think we could all sign up to the values and the beliefs that you are putting into practice with your students. Um, and I'm really looking forward to meeting everybody over the next two days, and particular, particularly for us to, to, to do some co what we would call co-creation. So creating together a future um, by using the examples that we will hear from each other. And also provide support for each other, because sometimes it's a bit of a tough battle um, actually getting the principles that we know work to convince colleagues. So being with like-minded people is also something which provides us with energy. Um, so welcome to everybody, and I'll hand over back to you, Chairman. Thank you. Th thank you.